Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com. We are talking about breakups for men and more specifically dynamics on how to deal with your ex. How to relate with your ex to your ex after breakup or divorce. The topic for this video is what if she spreads lies or gossips about you? This can happen in different forms. It can happen in the conversation that she has with her friends. You know, if it stays within her social circle, it's not an invasion of your own social circle, it's an invasion of her own social circle. It stays contained, it's a couple of people, conversation that she might have individually. Yeah, he cheated on me, but when in fact it was not really cheating, you know, there might be discussions or gossips, there might be a bit of lies. So this is the first context in which it can happen. The second context in which she can be spreading lies and gossips about you is when it involves people who you care for. You know, she might have a, a chat with a parent of yours. She might have a chat with some of your children. She might have a conversation with some close friend. She might have a conversation with a woman that you're dating and with who you're engaging now. And so that becomes a bit more nasty because it's like if she's spreading lies or gossips, things that are not true about you, then it's going to invade your space and kind of sabotage the relationship that you have with people around you. And so that can be really nasty. A third degree of escalation in that process is when she goes public. Going public most of the times these days, it's not throwing rocks at somebody in a public place. It's going to be much more subtle than that. And it's going to be happening through social networks, more specifically, Facebook. So Facebook is a very powerful tool to spread our ideas to the world, right? And uh, right now something is happening on these uh, social platforms and uh, it's called character attack. It's called as well public shaming. Okay, somebody does something to you and then you expose it on Facebook. You go like, that person over there, here's what they did to me, and it sucks, okay? Or if there is somebody that you don't like, you can also spread lies about that person. If you take that on a wider scale, that becomes character assassination. Character assassination are attacks which are organized by organizations, for instance, to destroy a politician, the credibility of a doctor, you know, it's like it's much more nasty. And um, it's used by, by agencies, you know, you have uh, agencies and organizations which do that specifically. They are paid to destroy somebody's reputation. And so that becomes really nasty. Most of the times it's not going to come to that point, okay? So you are still within the range of being the target of a character attack or public shaming. So if you check online, a lot of this public shaming is coming from angry exes. It's like this woman was dating this guy for a while and this guy did something and then she's going to be posting stuff about this man revealing aspects that can sometimes be really private about their private life and exposing dynamics to the public. And very often it's going to be twisted. It's going to be misrepresenting facts or plain out lies. Once you are exposed to a character attack, you know, suppose that your ex says something that is really nasty, that is not even true. You know, once it's out there, um, whether it's a lie or not, the attack is on its way. And you know, if it's something that goes really public on a wide scale, you know, if she doesn't have much audience, you know, it might be 100 people, it might be 50 people, it might be 20 people who see that. But if she's got leverage online, you know, this can get much more nasty. It becomes like a, a public shaming campaign. And it might be multiple posts. Like right now when you check online, there are a couple of, you know, couples, people who were together before, who are in this nasty fighting back with each other on, uh, on social networks, you know, posting nasty videos about each other. And um, 
you know, if they want to play that game, that's up to them. The question is, what do you do if your ex starts doing that? Again, you know, the first degree is like her talking to her friends. There's not much you can do about it, right? It's like you can have conversations with her friends as well individually, and they might ask you questions. Hey, if she told me that you did that, or what's going on there, you know, what's your, your connection? And uh, you can just answer. You can go like, well, you know, that's not true. She's, she's misrepresenting the facts. Here's what happened instead. So you can, you know, kind of clean the territory if you have the opportunity to have conversations with these people. When it starts invading your personal network, you know, really your friends, family, children, uh, that's something else. It means that it requires a little bit more focus. And very often it's ongoing conversations to compensate or to, to balance up the nastiness or the toxicity that she might be spreading. Third situation on social networks. When this happens, there are a few possibilities for it to go. The first one, completely ignore. You go like, I don't care. You stay in your strength, you stay in your power. Okay? The second strategy, if she's saying something that is actually true, you know, gossips, she might, she might reveal something about you that your social network doesn't know about. Um, and you did something that was really wrong. A public apology is always a possibility. You can go like, hey, my ex is saying these things about me. Guess what? It's true. I did that. I regret it. I will do my best not to do that again in the future. It's a public apology. It might be a strategy that here and there you might need to use. It's possible that you did stuff that was humanly nasty, that was not nice. And then you go and you can apologize for it. The third strategy, if it's lies and gossips, you can post something about your interpretation or your vision of what happened. And um, when you do that, you can talk about it from a place of neutrality. It means that it's not going to be charged. It's not going to be emotionally charged. You can be really kind, you know, calm in the way you are sharing. It doesn't have to be aggressive or charged. That's the third possibility. A fourth possibility that I encourage you not to go into would be escalation. She throws a bomb at you, you throw a bomb back, and then you have this ongoing battle. And that can become really nasty because both of your reputations or both of your character attack assassinations might work and you might end up, both of you, completely drained and emotionally exhausted until you decide to have peace again. And, uh, but by that time, you might have invested so much time and energy trying to destroy each other and uh, it's a loss for both of you. So my advice is this, if you feel that there is a charge in your field that it's either coming from her or from you, it's much more powerful to solve that face to face. Yeah, you can have conscious fights, you can arrive and say, you know what, I'm really pissed with you, right? I'm really angry. I have this rage coming out of my system. You know, I will describe to you uh, in other videos ways of dealing with that or ways of entering into conflict, conscious conflict, constructive conflict, conscious fights, you know, from a place where you can really generate energy and really find uh, resolution. But when you bring that and you start engaging into that battle with your social network, it's no longer two individuals. It's a whole social circle. It's a whole energy reality. And if, uh, you know, you understand the power of collective prayer, you know, it's like if we get together and we send out positive vibes in a certain direction, it works. It's like it's collective prayer because we gather a field of energy that we project in a certain direction. And uh, collective attack works as well. It means that if there is a field of energy that is aggressive, toxic towards you, it, it works. And so don't initiate public shaming attacks yourself. And if it happens the other way around, you know, protect yourself. Yes, maybe post a couple of things about it, but 
don't retaliate, don't fight back, don't attack. The moment there is, there is no response, you know, if she attacks you or fights with you and there is no response, guess what? It's going to stop. There is no point of being aggressive with somebody if there is no resistance there. So the only way for the fight to keep on going is if you fight back. Then that's it. You have a war and you have an ongoing battle. And what I encourage you to do is find ways of bringing back harmony so that you can rebuild your life and you can rebuild your future. If you want to have a new relationship, if you want to engage with somebody new in the future, what you want is to clear space, to have energy available. And that's probably not going to happen if you are in an ongoing battle with an ex. That's the advice for now. I'll see you soon for another video.